Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting the three Blade Guard veterans from the Indominus box. Now I have already assembled them all up to the point of painting, which is their entire bodies minus their shields and backpacks. I have also textured the models and I have also primed them. I then went ahead and started off with an armored base coat of Iron Breaker all over the entire models. I then took Abaddon Black and Nuln Oil and I used it in a mix together one to one and then I applied it all over the armor as a base coat. Once that is done, I then went back with Iron Breaker and I dry brushed it all over the models, focusing mostly on the edges. It was a little bit too bright, so I went back over with the Nuln Oil and Abaddon Black wash again all over it and then I re-dry uh, brushed it again with iron breakers afterwards. This is a back and forth process. Keep doing it until you get the results you like. And now with Steel Legion, Drab, Baneblade Brown, and Rackhearth Flesh, we're gonna paint the cloaks. I'm gonna start off by layering the entire cloaks in Steel Legion Drab. Once that is done, we're going to do a one-to-one -one of Steel Legion Drab and Bane Blade Brown at around 90-95% to 95 of the entire cloak. Only the deepest, darkest recesses will have pure Steel Legion Drab. And once that's done, we're going to go back with pure Bane Blade Brown, and we're going to highlight maybe 70-80% of the cloak. We're going to focus on the raised areas and the highlights, the deep the deeper regions will have the other mixes, but we want to coat it with Baneblade Brown here. Now once that's done, we're going to do a 2 to 1 mix of 2 parts Baneblade Brown and 1 part Rackarth Flesh. And we're going to highlight the model, maybe like maybe 50% or less, 40 to 50% of the cloak is going to have this. The edges, the bottom parts, the raised areas are going to have this color. Once that's done, we're going to do a one-to-one -one of Baneblade Brown and Rackarth Flesh on the very edges, like 20-30% to 30 of this model, the edges, the very edges of the bottom and other places. And now with Rhinox Hide, we're going to paint the leather belt that goes around the model. We want to do this first because we don't want to uh, have to go back and try to paint around all the other things that are around the model. And now with Mornfang Brown, Doombull Brown, and Nuln Oil, we're going to paint the gun holsters and the various weapon packs that are around there. We're going to start off with Mornfang Brown. We're going to start off with a simple layer of Mornfang Brown on selectively the gun holsters and like square boxes that he has. We will then apply a coat of Nuln Oil all over it. And then once that is done, we will see where the Nuln Oil has pulled the most and we will highlight the other areas again with Mornfang Brown, focusing on the edges of the guns and within the open areas, we're going to find areas that we can highlight easily with the Nuln Oil applied. And once that is done, we're going to go with Doombull Brown and we're going to paint the round canisters. Every model has one. and. I'm just going to skip the Nuln Oil part, but after painting a base coat of uh, Doombull Brown, we then give it Nuln Oil, and then we go back and we highlight the edges and part of the main body, doing like a like a tapping, fluttering motion on it. Alright, we're going to try something new with Besticore Flesh, Corn Red, and Fugan Orange. I may not have the right paints for this, but we're going to start off with the heads. They're going to be red, so we're going to start off with a, two coats of Besticore Flesh. Then we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Corn Red and Fugan Orange. I choose Fugan Orange because that's all I have, that's reddish. And we're going to apply it all over the helmet and try to mimic what we did with the armor.
Once that's done, we're going to go back with the best decor flesh and we're going to try to highlight all the edges. I'm not going to put that much emphasis on the top crest because that's going to be painted a different color, but the rest of the helmet I'm going to try to highlight an edge. I try a second coat of the wash all over, and then once that is done, I try to highlight the edges, mostly focusing on the upper raised and creating some lines in. I then give it a third wash to tone down the highlights and hopefully make things blend better. And now with Warpstone Glow, Snarsnick Green, and Beal Tan Green, we're going to paint the eyes. We're going to start off with a base layer of Warpstone Glow into the eyes. I then decide to try using the Beal Tan Green right afterwards compared to all the previous times. I then go back and do another highlight with Warpstone Glow. And once that's done, I try to do a little dot highlight with Snarsnick Green. Okay, what I was doing wasn't working, so with Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Snarsnick Green, and Beal Tan Green, we're going to fix the helmets. With Mephiston Red, we're going to cover pretty much 90%, 90-95% 90 of the helmet with this. We only want, like, dark edges from the corn red and a little bit of the highlights left over, but a majority of the helmet's going to be Mephiston Red. We will then re-flood the eyes with Beal Tan Green to sharpen it up. And once that is done, we're going to take Snarsnick Green and we're just going to carefully, with a very small tiny brush and very watered down uh, Snarsnick Green, we're going to apply dots for the eyes. And then with Evil Sun Scarlet, we will highlight all the edges, trim up the areas around the eyes for the green. And now with Fenrisian Grey, Abaddon Black, and White Scar, we're going to do the shoulder pads. We're going to start off with Fenrisian Grey, and we're, every place is going to be white, we're going to coat it with Fenrisian Grey as a base coat. We're going to cover all the shoulder pads, the crests on top of the heads, and that circle area on the back. Now, we're going to use a transfer sheet, and the transfer sheet is white, so we're going to put a base layer of Abaddon Black on the shoulder pad, and that's going to be the base layer, and the transfer, the white transfer sheet is going to be on top of this, so this is going to basically going to be a highlight. We then carefully apply the transfer sheet to make sure it's aligned properly, and once that's done, we then make sure the entire thing is surrounded by Abaddon Black, so that the white outline is visible. After that's done, taking a micro pen, I'm going to l start laying out the basic foundations for a Black Templar cross on the sides. And once the Abaddon Black is done on the other side, I'm going to use the Fenrisian Grey and sharpen the edges of this black square. While I'm at it, I then add the Fenrisian Grey on their top helm as a precursor for white. Once I'm done with that, I then take White Scar White and apply it all over. I'm really beginning to dislike White Scar White because it's always very thin and always kind of clumpy. It's hard to work with. I need a better white paint.
Alright, so since this is a squad and uniformity is a thing, I noticed that each of my crosses look different on its left shoulder pad because they're different sizes. I suck at making uniform things. That's why it's been easier to do these crosses on the other models because they were single models. Now it looks terrible. So my first plan is to restart by covering them all with Fenrisian Grey and then making like a giant bulky cross symbol on each of the shoulder pads as a base and then reduce it and uh, cut away at it with Fenrisian Grey over. I then realized this is not going to work and so I just go and look through all my transfer sheets to find something command like and I find something that could stand out that can kind of work. Moving on, I then get Iron Breaker, and then I'm going to paint all the shiny metal pieces. The parts in the backpack, the exhaust ports, some chains, and some small things here and there. Iron Breaker is a pretty good, pretty shiny metal color. Alright, with Doombull Brown and Nuln Oil, we're going to paint the sword handles. Now we're going to start off with a base layer of Doombull Brown. And once that has dried, we will then go back over with Nuln Oil all over to darken it. And then once that's done, we're going to paint the upper 60% of each of the rings with Doombull Brown again. Simple, basic, easy highlights. And then with Skeleton Horde Contrast and Gullum and Flesh Contrast Paint, we're going to paint uh, the wear and tear on the exhaust ports. We're going to coat all the metal pieces on the exhaust, port, exhaust ports with Skeleton Horde Contrast. Once that is done, we're going to then go with Gullum and Flesh and fill in the exact exhaust port. Once that is done, we're going to start varnishing. We're going to take the Army Painter Anti-Shine uh, Matte and we're going to take AK Interactive Ultra Matte and we're going to varnish various different things. Now we're going to start off with the Army Painter Anti-Mat. Is what we're going to do is we're going to paint all the places where you think the model's going to be grabbed, like the arms, the legs, the shoulder pad, the head, things that are going to be touched. This is going to seal it in well, and it's also going to make sure it keeps that metallic shine there. This, I don't know how it works, but basically it's a mat that shines. So go figure. But it works here. And then with the AK Interactive Ultra Match, we're going to use it and we're going to paint it all over all the cloth. We're going to use it on the purity seals too, but that's a later step. So for all the cloth, we're going to apply it all over it. We're also going to apply it onto wherever we had the decals, the shoulder pads, basically wherever there's white. This is going to change what the white looks like, like its overall appearance. And then also seal in the decals. Make sure to apply two coats of this to properly seal in the decals. Alright, so this is going to be interesting with liquid copper, liquid gold, old gold, liquid gold, gold, and liquid silver, we're going to be painting the gold and metallic parts of the model. Now, because these paints are sticky and I essentially paint the stuff relatively fast, uh, I'm going to paint them in a specific order. I'm going to paint the shoulder pads and jewelry first, then I'm going to assemble the backpack on, and then I'm going to paint that, and then I'm going to assemble the shield as best I can and attach that. But we're going to start off with the copper, and this is going to cover the deep recesses or the base layers. And then with the old gold, we're going to fill in the inside parts of the shield not the outsides, and we're going to highlight various areas on the jewelry and the shoulder pads.
and then with the gold color we're gonna highlight like I guess you could say like 50% of the gold areas or the old gold whatever is old gold about half of it's gonna be covered with regular gold as a highlight so the top raised areas of the jewelry parts of the sword shoulder pad such and such And once that is done, we're going to attach the what I call it the backpack to the model. The reason why is because we have to press really hard on the chest, and if it has the gold paint, it's going to stick to our fingers, and we might get it everywhere. I also decided to attach the shield, but my goodness, the third shield for the veteran is really hard to attach, and I end up getting a bunch of gold paint everywhere, which I'll have to clean up later. Alright then, using the copper as a base, we then base coat the entire cross with this. Once that is done, we then take old gold and highlight like 80 to 90 percent of it. Only the deepest recesses will be copper. And once that is done, maybe around 50, 40 to 50 percent of the model will have gold color on top of it as a highlight and edge. And then once that's done, we're going to take our silver and we're going to apply it onto the edges of the shield, edges of shoulder pads, edges of spikes. Basically, this is just an edge. I think I applied a little bit too much to the center cross shield, but eh, live and learn. Alright, now that all of that is out of the way, with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to paint all the purity seals. Start off with a base layer of Corn Red. Once that is done, we're going to paint with Mephiston Red the entire ring and the center of the purity seals. Corn Red should still be able to be somewhat visible in a ring there. And once that is done, we'll finish off with Evil Sun's Scarlet. On like painting like 60% of the edge of the ring and a single dot in the center. Okay then, with a layer of Steel Legion Drab, Baneblade Brown, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint these Purity Seal papers pieces. We're going to start off by coating the entire Purity Seal in Steel Legion Drab. Once that is done, we're going to highlight all the edges of the paper, the creases and folds, and the upper raised areas with Baneblade Brown. Once that is done, we're going to go back with Agrax Earthshade and coat the entire thing in it. And then, once that is done, we're going to go back with Baneblade Brown and highlight the edges, the crinkles, and the upper raised areas. But, like, maybe like 60% of what was originally Baneblade Brown before, uh, we don't want to cover the, completely the previous layer. Alright then, with Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Snarsnick Green, and Warpstone Glow, we're going to paint the heraldry. Now, we're going to start off with the darker colors first on the heraldry, and Mephiston Red in this case, and we're going to paint this as a base layer on half of the shield. 
After the base layer is done, I then uh, fill it in with Evil Sun Scarlet. So a dark layer underneath and then the bright layer on top. Once that is done, I then use Warp Stone Glow and use it as a base coat on the other half of the shield. I then take Snarsnick Green and then fill in that whole shield using the Warp Stone Glow as a base coat. Once that is done, I then take Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet in a one-to-one -one and I paint the lower half of the shield as a, to make it darker. I want some uh, shading on this. I then use one-to-one -one Warp Stone Glow and Snarsnick Green to paint the lower half of the green parts of the shields to add shading. I then take these Command Skull icons from the actual Indominus transfer sheet, I finally find something useful from there, and I apply it to the center of each of the shields. I then seal it with two coats of the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte. Alright, I'm going to try something. With the Fang, Hoeth Blue, Fenrisian Grey, and that terrible White Scar, I'm going to try to paint electricity or power coming from the swords. Now these paints are going to be very watered down, but I'm going to start off with a very watered down and very liquidy like the Fang, and I'm going to paint on it. Now, it... I got better as I went along, but basically you want to paint sort of like swirls or stuff. And then with a very watered down Hoeth blue, I then fill in the fang color. And then I will use a very watered down Fenrisian gray and I will fill it in further, very thin layer this time. And once that is done, I will then take white scar white and then do very fine little taps inside it. And I find that the taps actually look much better than just placing smooth coats because it looks jack. I then get some iron breaker and then I go back and I do like some fluttering along this to make the power thingies or the electricity look jagged to break up its smoothness. I then place, I then seal it in with uh, the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte, which allows metallics to shine through. And it's done, I guess. So this was an interesting project. I somewhat feel like I'm getting progressively worse in some ways, and some ways I'm getting slightly better. But I am getting slightly bored of all these Primaris. <laughs> but I'm almost done with the kits. So I give myself a 6 out of 10 with this. Let's start with what we did good. What I did good was the Heraldric Shields. Those look pretty cool. The... Actually, that's pretty much it. <laughs> the cloaks were not as good as I did before. They were passable. And now I'm beginning to notice some negatives with uh, the Vallejo liquid gold paints. So when you thin them out with the alcohol, because they are alcohol-based paints, they dry very quickly. Too quickly. I'm probably going to need like some sort of isopropyl alcohol uh, wet palette specifically for them because it's just ridiculous but basically if you uh, try to dilute it too much it begins to get clumpy and all the model is pretty smooth but there are certain parts of the shields or the shoulder pads where it's clumpy it looks clumpy and it really takes away from the model another thing was I keep trying to do uh, I try to make fast quick easy paint jobs that have detail but the red helmets, I can't seem to get down, so I guess I'm going to have to bite the bullet and do proper red colors. Trying to do a fast and easy way never seems to work out for me. Another thing that is an issue, while the power swords, it's a good first try, they're not that good. Uh, it's not as good. The power swords don't look as good as they could be. And they're... Some things are good, but some things aren't as good. I think I also put too much silver on the shields. It kind of detracts. Mm -hmm. I should have put far less silver on it, only in very small key areas. So you could just barely notice it, but it would still add to the effect. So overall, a 6 out of 10. Need some more work, need some more practice. But, all right. So now for my next project, I'm moving on. I'm moving on to the Outrider bikes, or the Primaris bikes. Those will be my next project. And well, alright, like the video if you like the video, uh, comment if you have anything to comment or nitpick, 
Share if you like to share it, and uh, I'll see you soon. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.